Well, the elites are the biggest grabbers, and so they benefit by monetary, monetarily in terms of getting um, paid for the leases, et cetera. But for the poor, impoverished masses who have no say in terms of their being forced off their land, they are, um, you know, end up in adject poverty with no employment because land in Africa is so crucial to livelihood. It's, it's, a, it's like gold almost um, to most Africans. And if you don't have land, if you don't have a place for your livestock um, to, to flourish, um, then you're basically in poverty. But what one, a lot of people don't understand is that in the rural areas, um, livestock production, for example, means wealth. So, um, and of course, agricultural production means wealth. And so if you can't do either one of those, there's no way of living. Yeah. Um, Africa has to uh, increase its yields of, of, for its own uh, right. uh, food production. Right. How does it sit together with uh, the land grabbing you analyzed? Well, one of the problems, if, when you look at Africa and the history of Africa, I mean, one has to keep in mind that um, prior to colonial rule, slavery and colonial rule, Africa was self-sufficient in agricultural production. But you have to go back and look at that period and understand that under colonial rule that um, one of the objectives was to industrialize Europe. And so in, in that process, instead of um, maintaining the systems of subsistence farming, they began a process of plantation farming so that Africans were forced to work on plantation farms for export to, to Europe. And the case in point, for example, is Mozambique was forced to, um, to many of the people were forced to work on, on cotton plantations because Lisbon needed, Portugal needed cotton to produce cloth. Yeah. Okay, so it destabilized the whole um, farming structure of Africa between slavery and colonial rule. Is there anything like sort of a, a creed de coeur or something that you think that politics should seriously consider doing or, or not doing? The politicians? Yeah. Well, I think the politicians uh, need to be more concerned about the masses. Um, you take the case of South Africa, there's a there are constant um, protests, for example, against service delivery, promises that were made um, in the post-apartheid era that still are not being fulfilled. And one of the problems is that you have so much corruption that it's really problematic. And people are not concerned um, about the masses and fulfilling the promises that they made. And South Africa is one of the wealthiest countries, on the, if not the wealthiest country, you know, on the entire continent. So I think that, um, as they say, um, what is the saying? Um, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So that there definitely needs to be a new breed of leaders. But we're concerned because the new leaders are coming on board and they're taking on the same habits of, of the former leaders. And one of the problems in Africa that we forget about is that power is concentrated at the top and wealth is concentrated at the top. So you either have it or you don't. This corruption is not um, without, uh, they don't do it on their own. I mean, they have their cohorts in the West who are promoting it because you cannot export uh, millions and millions of profits from oil outside of Africa and put it into European banks or American banks without having um, support from the Western world in order to do that.